Hello and welcome to the final piece of the puzzle, the finishing touch, the chosen race body for our TT01 race build for the 2019 race season. A little bit late, but here it is. Now over the last 10 or so episodes in this series, you have seen us build up a second hand, old, worn, tired looking Tamiya TT01 into a thoroughbred raced car. We've changed servos, motors, speed controllers, shocks and given it a good clean. And to finish everything else off, here we have our chosen race body. The Honda Civic Mark 9. And what an impressive shell this will be out on track. So I think this was around £20 and includes everything you need to get this body race ready apart from the cutting tools and paint. And we'll show you in a minute what paint to use and what paint not to use. But let's open it up and see what we've got. Firstly, included, we've got the stickers. Look at those. They feel tough and there's two whole sheets of them. So a lot of sticking. Now unfortunately, they're not pre-cut which is gonna add a long time to the whole process and a lot of patience. But we'll show you how to cut those in a second. Also, we've got our instructions of where to cut the holes, how to cut them, how to install the wing, and also a map of where to put all the stickers. And finally, our masking sheet to mask out the windows and clear parts like the lights where we don't want to paint. And luckily, these are pre-cut, so that should just be a pull and stick job. And you've also got this sheet here which tells you where to put those. And here is the shell. Look at that. It actually seems pretty tough and there's quite a lot of plastic on it, especially up top around the roof. But it seems solid. You can see those little dimples there, those marks of where the holes will go. However, I don't drill these out till the very end and until you're sure these are correct for your chassis because it's likely that these are in the wrong position for your body posts unless the bodies actually come with the chassis. We've also got this and I think this is for a lighting kit if you wanted to add lights to it but we definitely won't be doing this for the race series. And finally, our bits and pieces. So in here we've got our wing, our connecting arms in there, our wing mirrors too, and a couple of body clips and screws to hold the wing on. And that's the whole kit. So first thing we're gonna do is cut out the body. And what I like to do first is get a sharp pair of scissors and cut out this bottom skirt from around the edge. Make sure before you start cutting, you know exactly what bits are additional plastic and to be cut and what parts are the actual car, side skirts and bumpers because the last thing you want to do is cut away the bumpers and realize you needed them. So just carefully cut away the excess plastic. What I like to do is get the bulk of the plastic out of the way first and then come back in and do the details. Now to cut out the arches, you can do a few things. Firstly, you can use one of these knife compasses here, which are really cheap. And basically, just position that where you need it and score into the plastic. You don't need to cut right into the plastic because this material, as we will show you in one of our next videos, will tear along any of the score lines you make. So you don't need to cut fully into it, just score it and tear it. And actually, you can get really good curves and radiuses with this method. So you can either do that or use that to start off with. And then what I like to do is get a sharp craft knife and just come in and finish off any bits that need it. Or just open up the arches a bit and round off any sharp corners at the bottom of the arches. And to be honest, you can even do this finishing touches and little details after you've painted the body and mounted it onto the chassis so you know where to cut. So quickly, you can't see it, but there's a little layer of plastic on the outside of the shell and this is to prevent the paint spraying onto the top of the shell where the stickers will go later on. When we peel this off later, as you will see, you'll be left with a nice clean surface. So, cut the body out and you can now move on to the painting. What I like to do, as you saw with our Kyosho RS200 body respray, is get some methylated spirits and give the inside of the body a real good clean and wipe down. This will get rid of any dirt, grease and oil that's got stuck onto the inside of the body and leave you with a nice clean surface to paint on. 
and then you can stick your masking stickers onto the windows because you don't want paint to get onto them. Firstly, because this looks unprofessional and you want a nice clean finish unless you're using tint paint. But secondly, in some race series, it's actually illegal to paint and cover up the windows because the marshals and race officials won't be able to see what you're running. So you might be hiding some mad battery in there or something that's not allowed in the rules. So you need to have clear windows. Now, a big, big note and something I admit that I got wrong and I've made the mistake so you don't have to. For this type of body, these soft Lexan or polycarbonate bodies, if you are using Tamiya paint, you want to get the spray that is called PS. So it will say PS and then a number depending on the color. What you don't want to use is the TS paint because this is for spraying hard body shells like those you get on the Clodbuster and the Tamiya lunchbox. And it's for spraying on the outside surface of a body. For these softer shells, the PS paint will almost actually chemically bond to the plastic and form a good solid adhesion onto the inside of the body. And it won't flake off or crack as soon as you use it. Really, it should last for years and years. If you use a TS paint, however, on the soft bodies, it won't bond at all and as soon as you give the body a little tap, it will start cracking and peeling off in a second, as you will see later on. We bought a PS and a TS white spray paint, and we picked up the wrong one to spray this shell. And after the second race day, the body was starting to peel, which is a pain considering how long it took to prepare it. So use PS paint on these types of shells when you're spraying, and basically you just want to slowly start layering up the paint, as you saw us do, with our Kyosho RS200 and Kyosho Ultimate Restorations, which we'll link below. Try and get nice even layers with a good solid coat with no light or dark streaks in it. And once you're done, you'll be left with a super crisp looking body. And normally I'd leave this for a day or so to dry before we do anything else with it. With that done, here comes the most satisfying part of painting any body peeling off the masking tape. And you can see we've got a good layer of paint all over and no clear bits or patchy bits. And look at that. Pretty crisp lines. Not as clean as the one we got with the Tamiya tape and the RS200, but not bad at all. To see what good lines look like, check out our RS200 body spraying video. However, the fact that these aren't super crisp doesn't matter because the stickers and the window frames will be going round this and covering that up. We did push the masking stickers down as much as we could, but it doesn't look like they stayed down. What you find with the actual Tamiya bodies is that the stickers that come with them are made out of their Tamiya tape, and this is a lot better. It seems to stick nicer and curve into the grooves a lot nicer too. But there you go. That is the finished article. And finally, to get that super shine, pull the top layer of plastic off. Another big note here, I'd normally pull this off right before putting the stickers on, just to keep the surface nice and clean and free from any oil or debris. But look at that mirror finish. And the body is starting to look the part. Finally, that leads to the hardest part of the build for me, the stickers. And as mentioned, unfortunately, these are not pre-cut. So, the way we cut these is to get a super sharp craft knife and a ruler where needed, and basically just cut them out on a cutting board. One of the most useful tools in our kit, and great when you're doing something like this or going around radiuses, is this 360 degrees rotating craft knife. And with this, you can really get round the edges, big or small radiuses, and even do straight lines. So a great tool to invest in. And this one here, the Exacto, was only around six pounds or so. Then just go for it. 
cut out all your stickers and follow the supplied instructions to stick them down in the correct positions. From experience of starting racing, I will say that if you're doing another shelf piece body or body just to drive around with slowly and to look nice, then this kit is perfect. It looks amazing scaled and is really nice to watch driving around. However, for racing, I will never build a body with this many stickers on it and that needs this much work to finish again. Purely because, as you'll see in the coming episodes, after the third or fourth race day, the body was absolutely trashed. And to be fair, that was mainly due to my driving, but the stickers alone on this body took days and days to cut out and stick on nicely. And if it was to go on a shelf, that would be fine, but they got trashed. So I think we'll go for something a lot more simple in the 2020 race season. In the end, however, the outcome was fantastic. And look at that, it looks brilliant. Even though it took quite a long time to get it nice, it turned out great. And we'll see how good that looks on the starting grid very soon. One thing I like to do whilst putting the stickers on is to get a cotton bud or something hard which won't scratch the stickers and push down around the stickers, making sure that they are properly stuck down and there's no little bits popping up. Because these little bits that pop up will start to collect dust and dirt and start coming unstuck. And what I also like to do is get a hairdryer on hot and just heat the stickers and the body up whilst doing this, just to melt the glue on the back of the stickers and make them really adhere nicely to the plastic shell. And this process will also help get rid of some of the creases in the stickers. You can also see that there's a few bits here where the stickers haven't quite met up and the white body underneath is exposed. And what we'll do here is cheat. So we can get a green or a red or black permanent fine line marker and just fill in the color where needed. Or if you've torn a sticker somewhere, you can do this also. Now a lot of the time you'll find that there are set regulations for the size of wing you can use, which is fine because it gives everyone a fair chance. So there will more than likely be restrictions on the length, width and height of the wing you can use. So once you've found these, measure up your wing, mark it up, making sure that you cut the material away from the correct part of the wing and using whatever you can, cut it to size. So what we've used is a little junior hacksaw and we've also used a file to round the edges back off and make everything look nice and tidy and take away any sharp edges. And as you can see, it's come out looking pretty good. Next, what you want to find are the little marks on the body which indicate where the screws will go for the wing arms and you can just drill those through. Now importantly, note here that these holes need to be snug so that the screws don't wobble around. And also make sure that as much as you can, this applies to any hole you make on an RC body, that the holes are nice, clean and as perfectly round as possible. Because if it's not and there's a little kind of defect or cut in the edge of the hole, this is where you're likely to get a crack following a crash or a tear propagating from this little defect. So if you can make a perfect, clean, tidy circle, that would be ideal. What we normally use to make our holes is actually an old metal center punch tool and we'll heat up the tip of it with a blow torch or a gas stove and then just touch it where the hole needs to be. And this will melt through forming a perfect clean circle with nice tidy edges. And the center punch is also tapered, which we'll show you later on, which means you can get whatever radius hole you want. And as you can see there, we've put our four screws in to hold the wing arms on. Then just screw the arms on, screw the wing on top of that, and that's it, there we go. All that's left to do now is position the body onto your chassis, mark up where you want the holes to be, and cut them out. And this I always do last, but that's it. Personally, I'm very happy with the way this has come out and I would definitely do one of these with this amount of detail again, but 
definitely not for racing. Also, the true test will come when we see how this body performs out on track with the TTO1 chassis and hardware under it. So for example, how it handles on the straights, how it performs in the corners, because the bodies do actually make a big difference to performance and driving. But that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed briefly seeing the coming together of our chosen race shell for the 2019 race series. And in the coming videos, we will be showing you pure action from the 2019 race season, as well as showing you some of the goodies we've got coming up in 2020, which as our second season of racing will be very exciting and I cannot wait for that. But that's it. Again, do get out there, find your local tracks and clubs and get racing because the summer season is fast approaching and it's a great time to get involved. Please do rate, comment, subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching and see you soon.